In this video, I'll demonstrate two accurate ways of modeling an icosahedron in SOLIDWORKS or any CAD modeling software. It's an interesting mathematical shape with 20 faces that are equilateral triangles. I'll link some videos in the description that explain more about its mathematical properties. With the first method, I'm going to start by drawing a five-sided pentagon and dimensioning one of the edges to 10. I'm now going to begin by drawing one of the faces of the icosahedron and I know that this top vertice has to be vertically stacked on top of the origin, so I'm going to align them along the y-axis. As you can see here, I can adjust the height and the vertice stays in the correct vertical position. I'll set one of the edges as 10 to keep all the dimensions the same. And now I'm going to proceed to drawing a new pentagon, which is going to be used as a reference for an upcoming vertice. I'm drawing a construction line here from a vertex of the second pentagon to the midpoint of an edge of the first pentagon and I set them as perpendicular to each other. This ensures that this second pentagon is halfway rotated relative to the first one. What I'm going to do now is draw a second face of the icosahedron and use that vertex point from the second pentagon to stack it vertically with this new vertex of the secondary face. Now I'm going to set the edge of this secondary face as 10 and this is correctly positioned in terms of the geometry of the icosahedron. The next step is to create a plane which is on that vertex and parallel to the original plane. I'm then going to use this plane to draw a new pentagon, which is essentially in the same rotational position as that second one, but now it's at the correct distance away from the first pentagon on that original plane. Here I'm proceeding to do another 3D sketch, which allows me to create one of the faces on the bottom part of the icosahedron. And similar to before, I'm positioning the vertex of this face stacked vertically with respect to the origin. And setting the edge as 10 gives me the correct geometrical face on the bottom side of the icosahedron. And finally here I'm creating a second face on the middle part of the icosahedron. And hopefully you can start to see I've got four faces of the icosahedron. So I can fill these in using surface tools. So if you have three of the edges in their own individual sketch, you can use the fill surface tool. Or you can use the more versatile boundary surface tool where you can use the selection manager to select two edges in the first direction. And that will allow you to create the surface. But if you're using the boundary surface tool, it's better practice to have two edges in the first direction and then the third edge in the second direction there. It just defines it a bit better. If some of the sketches disappear, you can right click them to show them again to create more surfaces. So here I create that final fourth surface. And now I've got four surfaces created in SOLIDWORKS. So the plan from here is to do a rotational pattern. So I'm selecting all the surfaces, doing a circular pattern. I'm doing it around the central axis. And make sure you select the features as faces and bodies. And then you can go ahead and do the rotational pattern. So what we have here is pretty much the icosahedron, but these are multiple surface bodies. So I'm just going to hide the sketches to make it a bit clearer. I'm going to select all the surfaces, do a knit surface and create a solid. And now we have the complete icosahedron as a solid body. So I'm just going to add an appearance here and turn on perspective and real view graphics. And there you have it. Looking at a different method of modeling this in SOLIDWORKS, which is faster and more fascinating really, if we have three rectangles in the golden ratio that are intersecting each other 
in this orientation, we can actually draw lines between each vertex of the, of the rectangles and that gives us our icosahedron. The golden ratio is 1.61803 and so on. Um, it's a mathematical number that's found in nature, similar to pi. If you're not familiar with it, I do recommend you read up a bit about it. It's quite interesting. So I'm drawing those three rectangles in the correct orientation here. I've just set the smaller edge as 10 and then the bigger edge as 10 multiplied by the golden ratio. So it will be 16.18 and so on. And now all I need to do is a 3D sketch and link the vertexes, vertices of the rectangles. And if I fast forward this, it will slowly give me the correct icosahedron. So I'm just going to hide those sketches to make it a bit more clear. And here we have a wire mesh of the icosahedron. So similar to before, I'm going to use the surface tools to fill in all the surfaces. Or rather, I just need to fill in four surfaces and then I can do a circular pattern. So there you have it, a second way of creating an icosahedron. Um, please let me know if you know any other methods of creating this. I'm sure there's many, many different ways you can create it, uh, some more efficient than others. If you learned anything from this tutorial, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any questions, let me know below. And thank you for watching.